Hi, this is Mr. New, and welcome to another episode of Illustrator CS5 for East Korean Tech Academy. In this episode, we are going to be looking at the type tools. Let's go ahead and get this going. As I click and hold this button down over here, you're going to notice there are a number of type tools to choose from. The first one is a standard type tool. There's an area type tool, type on a path, and then those same three again as vertical tools. Now we're going to show how these work and when you would need them. So let's go ahead and start with the type tool. Type tool, basically, as it would work in most other programs you'll find, if I just click and then start typing, this type will actually just follow that same path. I'm going to go ahead and click Copy so I don't have to keep typing all the time. And if I just keep pasting, and keep pasting and keep pasting, that will keep going as long as I want to go on a straight path. Let me pull that back a few. Once I have that, I can select it and notice we now have bounding boxes around it. If I drag the bounding box, the type itself gets larger and fit whatever size bounding box. I can make the bounding box tall and skinny, short and fat. If I click on the path, I can drag it around can even change the color. Notice we do have fill color and we can choose a stroke value for this as well. We can even change the type of font. Notice, however, when I click on the font type here, it doesn't show me the style. It just gives me the name. If I want to see the style ahead of time, I can go up to type, font, and now I can actually view the style before I choose it. I'll go ahead and constrain, pull this on in and have this the exact size of my artboard. So that is one function of the type tool. Let's go ahead and click on that type tool again. If I click and drag a bounding box and then click within that box, I can actually then print out and it will stay within that box. I can actually go to my selection tool, make that box bigger. The type doesn't change but the bounding box does. The type will fit the bounding box. I can also create a shape. I can create a rectangle or any shape for that matter. Let's have a little fun with this and pick a polygon. So I'll go ahead and create my polygon right out here and I'll select it and move it kind of into a position here. Let's go with no fill and I will do a stroke so I can see it a little easier. There we go. And now I'm going to choose Area Type Tool. So with the Area Type Tool, I want to hover on the path itself. If I don't, if I was to click just inside this polygon, I would get a warning message that I must click on a non-compound, non-mass path. So, okay, I'm gonna click on the path itself, and now I can start typing within that path. And now my text will fit within that path in that shape. If I select all of that, I can actually go up to paragraph and have it align center or align to the right. Let's go center. And now when I click off, my type actually fits within that polygon. Let's take a look at typing on a path. First of all, I can just create a path. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my pencil tool and I'll create a nice little curved path right here. And I will grab my type on a path tool and I am centered, so when I click on this, it will probably go to the center, which it did. But if I start typing now, my type will actually constrain and follow that path. I can do any path, for that matter, if I wanted to use my spiral tool, and I'll create a path, uh, type on a spiral. Any kind of a shape, whether it's an open or a closed shape, let's go ahead and do one more. Let me pick the ellipse tool. And I'll hold the shift key down to constrain it to a circle. Once again, I do not want to fill on this. I will go ahead and put a stroke on it for right now. Now, once again, if you do go without the stroke, there won't be any line at all, but we'll go ahead and click on that and we'll add our text to that. So that is typing on a path. Now we're gonna zoom in on this circle for a minute because I wanna show you a couple of things on this. When I click on this, notice I have a number of handles. I have a handle here that will mark the end of my text, another handle that will mark the beginning of my text. So I can pretty much drag those around at will. But this third handle at the bottom, interesting handle, if I click and drag on that handle, 
This will allow me to flip the text into the center of the circle. So if I need an inner circle text versus the outer circle, this is how that's created, by just dragging that either out or in. Okay, the last couple things I wanna show, let's go ahead back out full screen for a minute. Let's say I need text just to kind of run down the side. That is my vertical type tool. And notice we can do vertical type in an area or on a path, so I'm not gonna worry about showing you that. But I will do vertical type just clicking here. And I will do a test here. Okay, and I want that to not be centered. So this is only a test and I can have my type running vertically. Last thing I wanna show you is the variations on justification. Let's go ahead and click on our shape here for a moment. Going to the type tool, I can select all my type. If I click up here on paragraph, I not only have the option for left, center, or right, I can also justify with the last line aligned left, last line aligned center, or right, or everything justified. Let's go ahead and click on all lines justified for a minute. And notice this first line is kind of odd because my polygon was not straight, so it's a little crooked. If I go ahead now, click on the side of this, add some space to this, space, there we go. And now I have my polygon with all the letters justified. So we have a nice clean polygon all the way around. So that's it for the type tools for today. Short lesson, but definitely effective. Please play around with all these and we will see you on the next episode.